Jets here, and I'm going to be going through how to install a ELS 4-degree ignition advancer on a Generation 1 Yamaha FZ1. Um, put the stock ignition advancer in to do this. Uh, figured, why not make a video of how to do it and uh, show you how easy it is. This is really easy. So, main reason why people put these on, um, there's, there's a... Uh, a bit of a, a controversy. Uh, some folks say that you shouldn't be putting an advancer on this unless you have compression. Ivan from the Ivan Performance, who is generally uh, a great cat for tuning these if you're going to go aftermarket with a little more fuel, a little more power, a little less gas mileage, because you usually use the throttle more. Um, I don't. I think uh, the 130 something wheel horsepower these things produce stock is more than enough. Um, but instead of using uh, jetting to kind of correct the cold start problem, I found the uh, four degree ignition advancer has cured, uh, has really helps out with the uh, the um, the hard starting this bike sometimes has. And it's really not hard starting. You have the choke on, you give it the crank, it kind of spins, you have to give it a little throttle and she'll fire up. With the four degree advancer, that problem gets eliminated. You also have a little bit more power. It feels like you have a little more on, thro on tap power. Um, it doesn't really show any d huge dyno results. Some people will say you get about three to four horsepower, depending on the application. Ivan swears that you get no horsepower gain. Uh, for me, I feel like there's a little bit more better throttle response, and the, the cold starting is definitely better, especially for me when uh, you know I ride in really cold weather. So, part in the bike, it's a little dirty, uh, but we're gonna just uh, first uh, we're gonna find the the, the timing cover. So basically, is your timing chain and the ignition cover. This is your uh, uh, your, um, your 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 cover right here for your um, your timing plate. So basically, there's these eight bolts that set that I've got to come off. So um, if you're really good, you will never actually have to break the gasket. Um, I always keep a little bit of black silicone. Some people be like, oh, I need a new gasket. You know, come on, guys. Like, I've used this stuff on all sorts of bikes. Oil-cooled, water-cooled, injected, carbureted, and this stuff seems to work great. So basically, what you want to do is get this cover off. And we'll expose the spark plug timing plate. So part of my bike, guys, it's not a pretty bike, but it runs great. And there are some are different sizes, so keep that in mind. That some are longer than others, so when you put it in, you put these bolts back in and go, ooh, this one's sticking out a lot, or it's not hitting any threading, make sure that you have the right bolts at the right spot. This is a deep one, I believe. And then there's this little clip here that holds that that time that timing wire that feeds to um, the digital points, I guess is what you call them. Of course, I think this guy's got a, uh, some kind of more of a ECU, although it uses, um, it is carbureted, uh, it uses a throttle positioning sensor and uh, kind of gives it a little more retard uh, depending on RPM and gear so that you're not killing yourself. But, right, let's see. There she goes right off. Come on, baby. There she goes. Perfect. So, uh, this is the uh, cover. As you see, the gasket came, came right off. I just put put my old one on so I just was in there not too long ago anyways uh, here is the uh, to the Denso uh, timing plate and uh, we will grab and that's a 14 so what I do is I'll go over and I'll put the gear bike into first gear and that basically engages the the crank to the transmission obviously but uh, the trick between that is that it's going to, instead of spinning the crank, it's going to 
Uh, also, spin the transmission. I'll apply the brake so that there will be a tension and the motor will stop freeze and I'll be able to brake this bolt for free. Uh, I'm just using a 14 millimeter wrench. Apply the brake. Comes right nice and loose. You might get a little spin there. That's okay. You'll get, you'll get, you'll grab it. So there's a washer here. Your bolt. Make sure you don't lose those things. And the plate comes right out. So your timing chain is a good chance spot to make sure you know your guides are looking good. Nothing irregular. Hello, little connecting rod. And then um, you can see here this ignition plate. You line them up. Okay. And see how it's off just by a touch. And that's going to advance your timing just by a touch, which will give it a little more happiness. So ELS is a guy, uh, he does a lot of ZRX timing stuff as well. Um, uh, he's a great guy. His name's Pete. Uh, great products. He makes these products by you know by himself. Uh, you know they're made in America. They're good quality products, and uh, I've never had problem problems with mine. Also, uh, what I usually do is I'll grab a little bit of uh, paint or some thread lock. Um, not necessary if you do it correctly, but I just do it just in case. Just case. Sometimes this is my middle name. Sometimes it's time too. No, make and make sure that plate does not come loose at all. Because if it comes loose, you're gonna have a, a bad time here. Okay. So just like before, apply that brake. Give it a good little snug. She is not in gear for some reason. Now you should torque it, but I personally don't because I kind of know, and I don't know what the torque settings is. If you're really anal retentive about that, go for it. But I'll tell you, I don't do that. And you can give me all sorts of grief. But like I said, I've put a bunch of miles on these bikes and I've done that. Uh, this is my second FZ1. My first FZ1 had a, a, a pile of miles. And I never had problems, so. All right, where's the deep one here? There's the deep one. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, torquing these down, I usually do it. I usually get these all nice and tight, and then I'll just do a nice little hand crank. Don't go too crazy on tightening these. They don't need to be too tight. I'm going to put my spacer back in before I forget. I won't forget. Because if you get these too tight, they will cross thread that nice soft aluminum case. And then you'll be in for a bad time. So I usually go a little hand tight. I'll show you in a second. All right, this is a shallow. Okay. Last one. 
And sometimes I'll keep the gasket out or uh, the silicone out just in case I need to make a new um, gasket or whatnot. Okay, so I'll start on the corners. And then I'll just go through and kind of give them a good little pinch. Like I said, I'm not trying to be world's strongest man here, but making sure there's a nice evil amount, equal amount of pressure applied to the gasket. All right, so we are installed. So we'll take our key and just do a quick start, make sure everything's working good. Usually this bike will crank, 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 even warm. Oh, she's... Come on. Okay, starts right up. Perfect. And that, my friends, is how you do it. Super quick, super easy. It's an ELS ignition timing, four degree advancer. Some people, hey, yeah, no, the stock one's the better one. But uh, personally, I've just found having that four degree ignition advancer in there kind of gives me a little bit more throttle response. Um, not necessarily faster, but definitely a lot more low end mid range instant grunt. You're not really having to find that power. So uh, that's my review and my little uh, install and how to. Hope you guys enjoy. Best.